The Case of the Puzzling Possum. In a high rise building, deep in the heart of a big city, live two private eyes Bunny Brown and Jack Jones. Bunny is the brains, Jack is the snoop, and together they crack cases wide open. This is the story of case number three. The case of the puzzling possum. The case of the puzzling possum. Chapter one. Buttons. Bunny collected buttons. She had a lot of them. Probably a million. Bunny? You've got probably a million buttons, said Jack every time he visited. Yes, said Bunny proudly. Jack looked at the buttons. Buttons are boring, Bunny, he said. They are not, said Bunny. They don't do anything. Said Jack. Why don't you collect fun stuff like trains? I like buttons better, said Bunny. But why? asked Jack. Because they're nice and quiet, unlike some raccoons I know, said Bunny. I'm nice, said Jack. You'll be even nicer if you make me a cup of cocoa, said Bunny. I can do that, said Jack. And I can be quiet too. Okay, said Bunny. Ring! went the telephone. If it's for me, I'm not here, said Jack. I'm being nice and quiet today. Ha! said Bunny. She picked up the phone. Hello? she said. Jack tried to listen while he fixed the cocoa. Really? Bunny said. Jack knocked over the milk. When? asked Bunny. Jack dropped a cup. Where? asked Bunny. Jack spilled the marshmallows. Amazing, said Bunny. Jack dumped the cocoa powder. Right, said Bunny. She hung up the phone. Jack, what are you doing? asked Bunny. Dropping, knocking, spilling, and dumping, said Jack. Plus, being nice. Well, said Bunny, it's time to go to work. We have a case. Really? said Jack. He sat on a marshmallow. That was Mr. Riley. Who owns the music store in the corner? said Bunny. Someone keeps taking a trombone. Taking a trombone? asked Jack. And putting it back, said Bunny. Putting it back? asked Jack. Right, said Bunny. We'd better get over there. Jack stood up. Let's have our cocoa first, he said. Here's your marshmallow. Where's mine? Bunny looked at him. You don't want to know, she said. Chapter 2 The Case Mr. Riley met Bunny and Jack. At the door of the music store. 
Hello, Bunny. Hello, Jack, he said. How are you? Nice, said Jack. Bunny gave Jack a look. We're fine, Mr. Riley, she said. But how are you? Confused, said Mr. Riley. In the evening, when I close the store, the trombone is in the window. But the next morning, it's gone. Then the next morning, it's back. Then the next morning, it's gone again. Then it's back. Whoa, you're making me dizzy, said Jack. Sorry, said Mr. Riley. May we look at your window? Asked Bunny. Sure, said Mr. Riley. But the trombone isn't there. It's gone today, he said. But yesterday, it was there. And in the morning, it may be back. I think I'm going to be sick, said Jack. Come on, Jack, said Bunny. Let's look for clues. Okay, said Jack. But let's not talk about last night and this morning and yesterday and today and the next morning or I may throw up. Right, said Bunny. We'll just look for clues. Oh, I forgot, said Mr. Riley. The trombone did show up for a while yesterday morning, but then it got a run, said Jack, heading for the bathroom. Oh, dear, said Bunny. I'll just have to start without him. Mr. Riley went back to work, and Bunny looked at the display window. Hmm she said. A piece of straw. Hmm, she said again. Muddy prints. She wrote down one straw, two muddy prints. Bunny was still looking when Jack came back. Feeling better? asked Bunny. Ugh, said Jack. Did you solve it? Not yet, said Bunny. She showed Jack her clues. Straw and mud, said Jack. Sounds like a farm or a barn or a hayride said Bunny. Where have I seen that word? asked Jack. On Mr. Riley's door, said Bunny. Come on. Hayride. Take a hayride with Gus and his big brass. Sure enough, on Mr. Riley's door, there was a sign for a hayride. Take a hayride with Gus and his big brass boys, read Jack. Brass, said Bunny. That's it. Jack, she said. We're going on a hayride. Just when I was starting to really like standing still said Jack. Don't worry, said Bunny. You won't get dizzy again. Just don't invite Mr. Riley to come with us, said Jack. I promise, said Bunny with a smile. Chapter 3 The Culprit 
Jack picked Bunny up that night. He was wearing a cowboy hat. Howdy, he said. You look like a bandit, said Bunny. All raccoons look like bandits, said Jack. Yes, but the hat makes you look like a professional bandit, Bunny said. Goody, said Jack. Do you like my boots? Asked Bunny. You look like a rabbit, said Jack. I am a rabbit, said Bunny. Yes, but boots make you look like a professional rabbit, said Jack. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Bunny. Let's go. Jack and Bunny took a taxi to the hayride. I'll bet we're the only people who ever took a taxi to a hayride, said Jack. Maybe, said Bunny. When they got to the farm, there were thirty taxis lined up. Guess not, said Jack. Come on, let's go look for Gus's big brass boys, said Bunny. Jack and Bunny strolled around the farm. People were singing and dancing everywhere. There was a lot of straw. There was a lot of mud. And up on the hay wagon, there was a trombone. Look, said Bunny. A young possum wearing a long scarf was playing the trombone. He was very good. When he finished, everyone clapped. That's our guy, said Jack. How do you know? asked Bunny. Look, said Jack, pointing. Against the barn was a trombone case. It said, Riley's Music. Bingo, said Bunny. What do we do now? Jack asked. We'll follow him after the hayride, said Bunny. I'll bet he takes the trombone back to the store. Right, said Jack. Ooh, beans. Cowboys love beans. Want some? Sure, said Bunny. We may as well have fun while we're here. Hee-haw, said Jack. Chapter 4 Solved After eating beans, riding on hay, and saying yee-haw a lot, Bunny and Jack went back to work. Their taxi followed the possum's taxi all the way to Mr. Riley's store. When the possum stepped out with a trombone, they nabbed him. Oh, it was a sorry sight. The possum cried and cried. He told them how the hay wagon had rolled over his own trombone how he needed to play music to support his mother, how he had to sneak into Mr. Riley's store and borrow a trombone. Jack nearly cried too. Jack was sensitive, but Bunny was practical. Well, she said to the possum, whose name was Freddy. How about giving trombone lessons at Mr. Riley's store to pay for this one? Then it will be yours to keep. Really? 
asked Freddy. Sure, said Bunny. Mr. Riley's a nice man, but he might make you dizzy, said Jack. Freddy promised he would talk to Mr. Riley the next day. Jack and Bunny said goodbye and went back to their high rise. Another case solved, said Bunny. Want some cocoa? Can't, said Jack. I knocked over the milk, spilled the marshmallows, and dumped the cocoa powder. Hmm, said Bunny. But I sure was nice, wasn't I? said Jack. Very, said Bunny. Yee-haw, said Jack.